I think that Mark 8, 34 is one of, if not the most important verse in the entire Bible on the whole issue of discipleship. Kai praskala samanas tan achlan sun tois mathe tais altu apen altois a tis thele apisomu akaluthain aparnesastho he altan kai arato tan staron altu kai akaluthaito moi and praskaleo gathering the crowd with his disciples, so the larger group along with the twelve, he said to them, if anyone wishes to follow after me, then here's your three imperatives. Let him deny himself, right? Aparnaomai, this is a middle imperative, an aorist middle imperative. Let him deny himself, and arato, an heiress active imperative, to take up his cross, and then you have your present imperative, follow me. So you have an aorist imperative, an aorist imperative, and a present imperative. And whenever you see tent shifting going on, it's almost always significant. So you have to ask yourself why. But I think this is an especially interesting form when talking about aspect. It is an aorist imperative. When you look at the parallel in Luke, you'll find out that arato is joined with kath he meron. In other words, you take up your cross every day. If we didn't have that, we might look at the arato and think maybe it uh, refers to maybe conversion, that you're saying no to yourself and you are deciding to pick up your cross and then daily you follow him. But that's not what Jesus meant according to Luke, and I'm, I'm sure in Mark as well. Uh, but the point I want to make is that just because this is an heiress doesn't mean it's punctiliar. That idea is still floating around there, and we have to get rid of it. And the fact that this is daily in Luke shows that that's the case here. But the other thing that's really important to point out here is that what is discipleship? Discipleship is following. So if anyone wishes to follow after me, in other words, if you want to be my disciple, we used to say be a Christian. We have other ways of saying it now that I think are probably a little healthier. Like if somebody wants to be a Christ follower, then what does that mean? Does that mean you say a uh, sinner's prayer and then live any way you want? No. It means you deny yourself. You say no to your own worldly ambitions, your perceived rights, And instead, you live as one who has been crucified to himself, take up the cross, and then daily, present imperative, right? Daily, you follow him. That's what it means to be a Christ follower. It involves denial and living as one who's been crucified to himself, and then you follow. I think of all the verses in the Bible, this may be the most difficult to translate. Uh, If you're not used to hearing the word them in a singular sense. The problem is that this passage, Jesus' admonition, is not a group project. This is for the individual. And starting in this verse, then down through the rest of the paragraph, is this whole issue of how do you keep a singular focus in your language is really difficult. So the ESV, for example, as you would expect, Uh, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In the NRSV, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves. Uh, NIV, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross. Pretty much the same in the NET. It's interesting what happens in the NLT is that they shift to the second person. And I generally don't like switching from third to second person. But in order to keep the singular focus of Jesus' teachings in the forefront, I think this is a place you can do it. 
If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way and take up your cross and follow me. I think that's a really good way to translate it. And as you go all the way through the rest of this paragraph, you'll see the translators having to fight the same battle. So we know that the words they and them uh, are not necessarily marked for number any longer. You can use they and them for singular and for plural. Of course, there's some places in the in the country that don't like that. There's others that do. We're right in the middle of that change. Uh, but I think eventually uh, they and them will become understood as not marked for number. But for right now, it is it is a very difficult passage to translate. Phrasing is pretty straightforward. I'm actually going to go start down here and we'll see how to do this. There's your verb. It's what he said. And now we have a conditional sentence. And... I'm still, after all these years, not totally convinced how to phrase conditional sentences. I tend to put the if clause to the left and the then clauses to the right, but it's the then clauses that tend to really pack the punch of of what's being said. So I'm going to go ahead and do it this way, that way this time. And if you want to be his disciple, then you deny yourself and you take up your cross, and in that manner, you follow me. Now, the other way is to recognize that the three imperatives are telling you how to occluthane. So I have to shrink the text down, but you can now then do this, see if it fits. Yeah, there it did. I think that's a helpful way to do this, that he said, if you want to follow after me, there's three things you do to follow. You deny, you take up, and you daily follow. And you notice I keep saying daily follow, and that's just because you've shifted to the present tense imperative, and I want to bring that out, that it is an ongoing process. There's been a shift, aorist, aorist, present, or continuous. Best verse on discipleship, I think, in the Bible.